Welcome, 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 friends. OG Murphy here with you. My players are frantically moving their characters around in the background here because I've granted them some free movement in between sessions. They've been in combat for a little while now, uh, and things are starting to stagnate just a little bit. And so I just granted a little bit of free movement to everybody who's not currently engaged to get them that much closer to where they're trying to go. Um, because when you have seven players, sometimes you need to just give them a little push to help things help things run a little bit more smoothly. I'm hoping they'll be through this dungeon tonight. So with that, uh, this is we're gonna play play playing some D and I'm DMing. This is a homebrew campaign, homebrew rule set. We're a combination of D and D five E and Pathfinder one E. But I'm also going to introduce a skill challenge probably in this session, which is a D and D fourth edition, I believe, uh, component. So we're just a big homebrew mess over here. I'm also eating my dinner, so apologies for that, as uh, occasionally I reach for a bite. I am a human who needs to eat. Uh, with that, we are going to go introduce our characters. They're going to introduce themselves in initiative order, starting with a player who is not here, so, uh, so he'll be played by another one of us, and that person, Anthony, will end up introducing two characters, our buddy Soto's uh, barbarian, Kythar, and then his own summoner, uh, Simone. So, with that, and without further ado, let's get back to it. Um, All right, guys. Have you have you made your movements? We... I'm live. Uh, no, Reed, Reed's yeah. engaged. Reed, Reed can't move. He's engaged. He's got skeletons up on his butt. It was everybody oh. who's not who does not have an enemy within oh, five feet. Who's not engaged? I yeah. Oh, yeah. move me back then. I right. got you. I got you. Um. Okay. So with that, uh, starting us off is you guys are going to introduce yourselves. We'll do a little brief recap uh, first. Who's doing our, our little brief recap? I am doing the recap. Okay. So last time uh, we were still, uh, or we, we had gotten out of quote unquote combat or direct combat. Uh, so we, we decided on a new initiative order to best support the team. Uh, after we did that, uh, we started moving forward through the hallway. Um, I was mostly uneventful except for the uh, right hallway, which was completely wall-to-wall -wall packed with skeletons. Um, the Tesk used lightning bolt to clear a large, substantial amount of them out. Um, and in doing so, illuminated the space to see the other room full of runes um, far down that right hallway, I guess right for my orientation, but um, the direction we didn't go. Uh, and the team decided that it was best to beeline towards the, um, go the other direction, because uh, we had somebody, I forget who went around the corner, um, they saw like a, a creepy dude kind of like scamper behind one of the statues um, where the brown dot is, I believe, on, Simone, the, uh, Simone on the map. Simone. Will, right? Simone or Will? Uh, I thought it was Simone, but it could have been Will. I think I spotted him and then Will saw it. There yeah. Um, and we saw him kind of escape through the wall like we had seen the um, eyes in the wall uh, just a session prior. Um, with that, Will kind of beelined down the hallway, um, made a decision to, to go right at the next intersection and basically headed down through till he saw an open, um, uh, room on his right. Uh, there were a couple skeletons in there and then some weird creepy dude, which I don't have the description for, but was described as weird and creepy was just <sighs> sitting in there. Uh, nobody has bothered him up until this point. We basically ignored him. So not quite sure what that dude's about. And he will continue down the hallway until he entered a really uh, vast chamber where there were two floating uh, dragon skulls yep. um, that uh, looked like they were just sitting there doing nothing until Wilb showed up and then uh, they directed their attention onto Wilb. Uh, one of Pulse. the skeletons used a uh, ice breath weapon, which will expertly dodge. Um, and then one of them advanced up along with a were there wait david are there three or two there are three there's three okay yeah so there's the two huge ones and then a larger skeleton uh dragon skull um that are currently challenging wilb who is uh flying 10 feet in the air uh 
looking for his next option. Other than that, unless I'm forgetting something. I'm uh, Wilb much... attacked him as well. He's uh, bloodied, he's, and that's mostly because of yeah. Wilb. He's bloodied. It was because you know, it was largely, and you because a Tesk also got him with a fireball. That's why yeah. the other ones wounded. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But he rolled. He rolled very. Shit. He rolled three <laughs> ones and two twos in his in his six dice. So it was it was garbage. Yeah. But you know, just trying to help Will out, and then at the same time, uh, the skeletons in the room advanced on uh, Kythar, and uh, a couple skeletons came out from the direction we didn't go, and started screwing with a task and i think uh when i moved away i took a couple of attacks um other than that i think most of it was combat unless anybody remembers any other specifics i'm forgetting mm, sounds pretty concise to me no nope, sounds good uh right. and then with that we're going to take you guys in your initiative order uh starting with kythar who unfortunately is players not with us so anthony if you would introduce kythar and then take his turn Hello, I'm Anthony. Tonight I will be playing Kythar, who is uh, a barbarian who, uh, I, from what I remember, his backstory was he, you know, had a tribe uh, whenever his tribe got uh, attacked by orcs. Yep. And so he has a hatred of orcs. Mm -hmm. And now this is kind of a mercenary for hire specifically, or and especially if he can get some drink out of it and also, um, you know, some a uh, little bit of coin but mainly drink. Uh, and he gets to kill orcs. Uh, so he, Kythar, I'm a, there's two skeletons right behind him, right? There's two, there's, there's four in the hallway behind him total, but there's two that are adjacent to him, yes. Okay, so he will be taking uh, uh, three attacks. Cool. Uh, How's he splitting them up? Probably doesn't need to worry yeah. about it, but... Two, the, two and one. Two and one, you got it. Roll them. I'll roll them all at once. It's not my character. It's not my character. Uh, the lowest being 13. 13 won't hit, but 13 probably will hit with whatever it turns into. 13 is a 22. Hits. Okay. So then they're both, right? 13. I, I don't know. It's 13. Character, yeah, yeah, so only one misses. Cool. So, so one on each. Yep. And that's going to be a D8 plus 5. The first one is 10. Enough. And the second one is five, 8. 8 is enough. Oh, nice. <clears throat> okay, so Kythar just, you know, he misses on one of his three swings, but otherwise just smashes through a couple of skeletons. There are a couple of more between him and a Tusk and Galfast. Uh, but he's taking a full attack action with his triple attack. What, it, what else is he doing with his turn? Uh, he's going to lift up his hammer and go, ah, ha, 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 three. And he's clearly struggling with the numbers. Uh, 30. Uh, count, you fool. Count. count. Uh, uh, that's five. And he, run, he keeps running. <laughs> the, the internal monologue. <laughs> Uh, that will be his turn. Uh, then that brings us to Reed. Sigbert is on deck after our baddies. Uh, Reed, you please introduce your character. Joe. Oh, um, Reed is uh, oh, he's God. more of a he's more of a brawn over brain kind of guy. Um, he's as thick as he is strong, um, and he likes killing things. He likes hitting things for his goddess, Iomba Day. That's Reed. That's Reed. Um, let's see. I'm Wait, gonna... I, I moved him. Uh, Reed is no, a... he's I'm engaged. He's out. engaged. I granted movement oh, to he everyone. Can't move. I, I, I granted movement to everybody who was not already engaged with enemies. Um, I am going to move 45 feet as far as I can. So I'm going to disengage. disengage. Cool. Yeah. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45. Puts you next to or just behind Sigbert. <laughs> um, and I'm going to look at Arthur and say, get out of there. Because I think Arthur's back there, right? No, Arthur's way down the, the passage. You, you were all alone. It's you and Sigbert. That's it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Arthur kind of hears the, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you see him dart across the corner. <laughs> um, and I'm done. 
Okay. Brings us to our bad boys, bad boys, what you're going to do. Um, and you have more movement than they do, so it seems. Uh, and I remind you, it is dark. Uh, so the tunnel behind you is not very visible at all, because you guys are both dual-wielding back here, Reed and Sigbert. Uh, so nobody's got a free hand for a torch. So the nearest light source is way the fuck behind you, or the bonfire in this room. So you guys are, you know, do not have great visibility where you're at. You can tell that a couple skeletons show up right in front of you. Uh, and then it, it's, it should be no surprise at this point that a flurry of arrows is going to come and fly past because that's been happening to you and Sigbert for the entire time that you've been bringing up the rear here. Um, but Reed's AC, and I, uh, how, how many rounds do you have, Mage Armor? Who granted it to you, and who's keeping track of that? It's for it's seven it doesn't hours. Matter. Yeah, seven doesn't hours. Matter. Okay, cool. doesn't matter. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, seven it, like, hours. It, yeah. like, clicked for me. I'm like, I should check in at some point and make sure that that's not just, like, forever. But if it is forever, then it's basically forever. That's great. Um, I'm going to run out in, like, four months. Yeah, so a flurry of arrows fly past and like three or four of them break off of Reed's, you know, heavy armor. One of them impacts on the magical shield uh, and nothing, nothing gets through the barrier that is Reed. Uh, however, you know, he can tell, <laughs> <laughs> however, he can tell from the sound level, the sound of bone scraping against stone that this, this corridor is like filling up pretty quickly behind him. Then, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, we've got... These guys are going to split up. we got one going to Kythar, one going to Batesk. Uh, it is a four against Kythar and a 13 against Batesk to hit. Definitely does not uh, hit Kythar. Happy to say it doesn't hit. Hey, there you go. Um... Simone, is this is this really where you are? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, Galfast shot at this guy, so that makes it pretty easy. Uh, are you in the cell? Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's a big eight against Galfast. I think that's not going to hit. Let me get up there. No. But... 16. There you go. But that does bring us to our floating Scully boys... Uh, two of which are presently engaged with Wilb. Mm-hmm. Oh, feels so good, Mr. Stark. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, and they're just going to... Both take big chomps against Wilb. Okay. Give me your chomp. Exact same dice roll for both. How funny. So it'll come down to modifiers. Uh, that is a 28 for big man. Okay. And, and a 23 for uh, smaller man. Just big man hits. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Then... Not too shabby. Uh, that is... 13 damage okay. as, as he, you know, as Will dodges out of the way of the smaller one, but there's not enough passageway to get completely out of the way of the larger one whose gaping maw basically fills this entire hallway. Uh, and, you know, he does get caught. His his leg gets caught in, in this uh, in this biting, bite motion. Uh, and he sees the other dragon head floating around behind these two but that okay. is it for our baddies uh sigbert is up arthur is on deck and don't forget to introduce your characters please all right <clears throat> i'm uh, chris i play sigbert um sigbert sees like a late middle-aged fighter two swords um he's a former soldier turned mercenary from uh well he's a former soldier turned mercenary um just picking up odd jobs here and there, you know, just going from town to town until he fell into this motley crew. Um, and he's kind of been stuck with them for a while. Just, uh, you know, kind of looking over his shoulder, just seeing what comes next. Um, and that's Sigbert. Um, and I'm going to 
kind of reach out and um, kind of tap uh, Reed and say, just ask him, are you good? I'm going to move up. Am I what? Are you good? I'm going to move up. Oh, yeah. I got I got these guys. <laughs> They're going to have to try a lot harder than that. And then I'm saying, moving forward. Yeah. And I'm just going to move to here. And now, oh. you come around the corner, and you see a couple of er errant skeletons in the hallway with most of your crew. Uh, a dark corridor reaching out in front of you, but there are, like, bits of blue purple flame coming off of bone fragments that are like filling the uh hallway down there and in their dancing light you see just like two big ass fucking dragon skulls like bearing down on will at the end of the hallway okay um i'm gonna use my second movement and then just move up to right by um arthur And then I'm just going to look at Arthur and say, what do we got here? And kind of pointing towards the, the skulls. Uh, DM, what does Arthur see? Um, Arthur sees two huge, uh, I mean, comparatively huge dragon skulls. One of them, like, towers over Wilb and fills the entire, you know, end of the hallway uh, and all, and you can see just like a glowing orb in the back of its throat, which is the source of its breath. Uh, there's, and then there's a a smaller version of it, which is not to say that it is miniature. It is just smaller than the huge dragon skull, still easily larger than Wilb in and of itself, uh, which is kind of like floating in the periphery, filling up some of the smaller gaps, uh, and. There's like this big scorch mark against the uh, side of the the hallway where the breath weapon has come through. There are bits of bone that Wilb has slashed and broken off of the huge skeleton. And there's like bits of fire escaping through the cracks and crevices. And those bits are still on fire around creating like a, a dim ambient blue violet light. Uh, but other than that, you can't see much, much more than just the hallway and these huge skeleton, uh, dra dragon skeleton heads filling it. Floating, flying. Ours is going to lead over to Sigbert and say, you know, we've been shooting these little guys for a while, but I think we really need to hit hit on the head with these two uh, monstrosities where Wilb's at. You, you see Arthur point his gun towards them. All right. Well, looks like we got some work to do. You're telling me. I got to clean my gun after this. <laughs> but yeah, then that'll be Sigbert's turn. A natural segue into Arthur's turn and Simone's on deck. Mm -hmm. Character introductions, please. Uh, oh, hi, I'm Stover. Uh, I'm playing Arthur Struva. He's a professor at the University Castle in New Birmingham in experimental firearms and black powder. Um, and you can ask him about that later. There's <coughs> more to it. Um, but he's ran into this crew in order to find out some more information about uh, his family, his deceased wife, and his deceased parents. Um, he's fought in some naval wars against pirates, and he's also uh, familiar with shooting cannons and the like. So uh, hopefully he finds what he's looking for and helps out all of his uh, crew members to get the same objective. So uh, he's a level 7 gunslinger, and he's about ready to make way and make some room for the rest of the party. So what Arthur's going to do is he's going to take his first shot at uh, this smaller uh, skeleton. Yep. So he can make room for himself to move up. Cool. And that's the rest great. of the party. Uh, that's a 28. That hits. Absolutely. Roll your damage. Three. <laughs> Three is enough that I need to roll for his hit points. Oh, man! Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, this was a particularly decayed skeleton in the first place. Uh, oh, it was, man. in life, it was an old man. Uh, obvious by the scoliosis and hunched posture of it. And uh, a strong breeze would have blown this one down. Uh, but you but you got it. Okay. Arthur takes his... He's going to start moving towards the... 
huge uh, monstrosities. So that'd be another 30 feet. Okay, sounds great. And as a reminder, the weapon you fired is currently unloaded as you have not taken your reload to, or your movement to reload it. Right, he'll need to take a spot on his next turn to reload. But he, but as long as he doesn't move, he absolutely will be able to do that. Um, and when, as soon as Arthur, Arthur passes me, I'm going to say, uh, look, look to your right. There was something in there. You see Arthur arms. pivot. I'll hold on to the to the wall here. Uh, roll, me a a look. roll me a perception check, bud. You got it. Uh, we've got a whopping... Oh, gee, well, 31. Yeah, uh, on a 31, you, you know, look around and you can distinctly see... And I've been I've been waiting for so many sessions huh. for this, guys. Like huh. like I am I, I don't even know. Hold on, I gotta figure out where this thing is. It's is Matt joining? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> lovelies. <laughs> and you see uh, if you check if you check Discord, this creature. Uh, perched atop one of the sarcophagi, uh, and he makes eye contact with you and then dives into this sarcophagi. Uh, oh, no. And disappears from sight. We need a witch up. Arthur will communicate uh, to the party that can hear him, particularly Galfast, since he asked. There's a little grave robber critter, and he ran over into the crypts. And Arthur will point at which crypt that he went into and disappeared from. Cool, cool, cool. I think that was what was looking at us. Yeah, it's we'll creepy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur is. A, uh, D Dave, can we? Can I look up? Can Arthur look up to see, like, if there's any, like crazy spider holes or anything uh, from where you're standing you can see another hole uh, let me get my get my brown paint out just like I've been using for my hole my hole punches you can see another hole here near the ceiling near the ceiling, uh, near the ceiling. where was it it's the, it's ah, the brown okay. dot. Yeah, brown dot. Okay, you'll see Arthur. Um, in the meantime, keep an eye out for uh, on that location, uh, and that's all he's got for his turn. Okay, great. Then Simone is up. Remember, to, reminder to introduce your character. And task is on deck. Yep, I'm Anthony, and I also play Simone. He is a cholo elf with his trusty sassy cat Eidolon companion, uh, Wilb, who is a uh, tiger who has a second head uh, of a snake and uh, also wings. And uh, and yeah, that's Simone and Wilb. And I think what's going to happen here is um, so Simone can cast spells. We can share spells. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that would target you as targeting your Eidolon instead. Yeah, right? um, yeah. so I'll be doing that except with um, uh, Rejuvenate Eidolon Lesser. Okay, sick. Yeah. And so uh, let me get that roll. He rejuvenates 11 plus 7, so 18. Cool, sick. Life. What uh, category is he in? Is he wounded? Is he uh, bloodied? Yeah, what's the, what's the first? Wounded he is was the first, bloodied. first tier. First tier. He, he was bloodied. He is wounded. Cool. Yeah. Um, to let you know, he's 43 out of 48. Cool. Um, and so uh, he will be making his uh, full attacks onto the, dra the largest dragon pole. Yep, pull. yep. Figured he would after all the damage he did last time. 
Yeah. So I'm going to do two at a time. Okay, so that is uh, plus 14, plus 14. So 26. We'll hit. Okay. Next two. Oh, Oof. fuck. Uh, low, lowest being 16, highest being 18. Both miss. Okay. So then I will do... I went back and watched the tape because I couldn't find my sheet that had these guys' health on it, and I, I got these numbers. You did crit on his last attack. You got all four, and one of them was a crit. So, you know, statistically, you got to roll low occasionally. Otherwise, yeah. Aaron's head will just explode. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, all, all, my roll, all my rolls are public. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so that's 24 damage plus that's 24 damage. Uh, the elemental damage, which is... Uh, so 28 damage. 28. Now I, I, now I have to do some math. you got to give me a second. Yep. Um, that's what I have my little my little quackulator here for. I like uh, that. I like when the DM has to do math. Make the DM work for you. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, still, still bloodied, but just like he was heavily wounded the first time, and the seven damage from the fireball ticked him over. He is heavily bloodied now. Uh, obviously having sustained a substantial amount of damage, uh, but he is still above that that quarter of his hit point threshold. Um, Simone seeing this is like, uh, hey, focus the big guys, putos. And you're going to see he's kind of far behind you guys. Um, or you hear the voice kind of far behind you guys. Not as close as you would like it. And... Uh, He's going to be like, uh, the big puto skull is like fucking almost there, fool. He's not looking so good. He only has like half his teeth left. Yeah, it's obvious at a glance. He's missing teeth. He's got cracks. He's like leaking fire through, you know, different. His, his flight patterns become a little more shaky and erratic, you know. Yep. I'm going to say, so do I. He -he. And I'm going to smile. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so, uh, first Simone's going to take a, uh, cause he's still, he just cast a spell. Yeah. So he's going to take a perception movement. check. Yeah. And his, and his check. Uh -huh. What's he looking for? Yeah. Where's he looking? Uh, I'm looking for, uh, more cause before I was able to see down this hallway up to here, I'm looking for details past where we can't currently see. Yeah. I got you. Uh, I've got my revealing, my skeleton of revealing. Okay. So I'll give you that as your free. Even a one would still indicate what your eyes can physically see. What do you see with your elf eyes? I don't know, fool. Uh, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> there is the, the hallway terminates in a small, narrow room, which obviously extends wider to the left and right than what your field of vision will allow. You can see a sarcophagi there, as well as a few errant bones, which uh, you suspect at one time may have been a bone pile, um, but there mm -hmm. is no movement of any kind there. Hmm. Seeing that... Um, he's going to take his last movement of uh, free five, yep. five, 10, 15. And I'm going to go up to uh Sigbert and be like, Hey, don't go that way. Fool. Looks like a dead end. All right. Um, I think I said it was 15. So I'm going to take one. Yeah. 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 And that will be some us. Great. That brings us to a test with Galfast on deck. Reminder to introduce your character. Yeah, my name is Tyler, and I play a Tusk. He is a elf sorcerer from the College of Arcane Arts. Uh, he spent his life studying magic, and specifically the arcane magic, and uh, decided he wanted a more practical use for all of his uh, supposed talents, so he decided to uh, leave or escape the college, depending on how you look at it. Uh, he traveled for a little while and just kind of wandered through the... the tundra countryside wilderness and ended up with this motley crew 
uh, he uh, really enjoys shooting things with magic missile, but not this time, where Tusk is going to cast Scorching Ray onto the uh, skull. I think I can do that. Cool. You do have a skeleton standing next to you. Just want to remind you of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. a it's a choice. Cool. As long as it's a, as long as it's a choice as as long as it's an educated choice made and not one that was like oh, I didn't see that there. Yeah. Well, no matter what I do, if I move now, I'll take a hit. If I you know wait till it's his turn, I'll take a hit. Maybe Sigbert will bash the skeleton's head in before that happens. I don't know. Taking a risk. Uh, I'm going to cast Scorching Ray on the uh, big skeleton. Uh, it is, I need to make a successful touch attack. Okay, um, great. So I'm going to do both the rays on him. Uh, That's great. Yeah, go for it. Um, roll your roll your, ta- your touch attacks. Take right, cover. So... Yeah, touch AC. Again, uh, this is just a, an out of game just general tip. For you guys, t- anytime you can get away with a touch attack against a huge enemy, that's almost always going to hit. That's a good thing to be doing, uh, generally. That's the noise that I imagine <laughs> I hear. Uh, what the nine turn into is all you need to know. Uh, it turns into a 13. Yeah, roll your damage twice, my friend. It's a big old Sweet. honking target. You could basically... A Tusk looks and he's like, all I have to do is aim down the hallway and I will hit the giant skull. Like, there's no room for anything else at the end of this. Like, it just takes up so much space. You don't have to beat any armor. You just gotta make contact with this giant fucking skull. Uh, so, how much damage do you make contact with? Mm, 11... Much better. 18. That's even better than that. Fireball. 39. Yeah. Or 29. 29. I mean, I'll take 39, but 29 is what I actually rolled. Uh, that is. Yeah, that will definitely, absolutely bring this thing to death's door. Uh, as, as it, like, makes contact and the whole thing. Like, the light that creates the breath weapon, like, flickers out for a minute, and the whole thing, like, clatters to the ground, and then the light spatters, picks back up again, and it kind of sputters and, you know, makes its way back up, and it's, like, aiming too high, and is like, turning, and it goes to yet to roar at you, and the bottom hinge of its jaw just literally falls off. So it's just a top jaw and, like, a roiling ball of energy, uh, just, like, cracked and basically on fire, uh, super, super rough shape. Death door. I think it's uh, a Tusk will say to the party. I think it's, I think it's gonna die soon. Maybe just one more hit. I don't know. Well, it's already dead. Oh, but, I mean, yeah, that's a good point, Galfast. Thank you. It'll, it'll <laughs> lose its magic. I don't. I don't know. Never mind the semantics. Just keeping it alive. Exactly. It'll be, be deanimated. I think is the. Uh... Wow. And I never learned about that in uh, in magic school. Yeah, yeah. I, I may look like I don't know much, but uh, you know, I, like I said, I have some magic. So. Hey, let's try to make sure your vocabulary is as good as your aim, fool. Good one. Not so. a problem. <laughs> Check this out. Uh, and I'm just going to stand still. And that's the end of my turn. Great. Uh, Galfast. You your shoulders. <laughs> Galfast is up. Reminder to introduce your character, and then Kaithar's on deck, played by Anthony. So I play the elderly dwarf Galfast. Spends most of his time on his horse Desperado, ranging the lands outside of the kingdom. Um, he has a look, looking at him. He has a wide-brimmed hat on. His face uh, darkened from the sun. Um, has a, a bow strung on his back. Um, dagger on his belt. <clears throat> Usually he's solitary, spends most of his time alone in the wilderness, um, navigating its terrain. Um, he's become a cartographer over the years. Uh, recently he's come upon this group after being sent south by Lord Estabar. Uh, at first he just brought gear and guidance, <clears throat> but now he's 
uh, joined them for the time being and has been traveling with them for the past few days. Hmm. And I am going to take three shots. The first one at the Death's Door Skeleton. Cool. You will incur an attack of opportunity from the skeleton standing behind you. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Um, will I get one for each attack that I make? or just No, he, he only gets one. So, you're good. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so here's the first one, and you can hold the attack. Me. So he gets extra attacks of opportunity. <laughs> That's a big, that's a big 15, uh, no, excuse me, that's a big uh, 17 against Scout Fast. Okay, that will hit. Okay. Four minimum three damage. Uh, what did you roll on your attack? Um, 18, I believe. Uh, 18, 18. Does, 18 makes contact with the skull, but you watch as your bolt shatters on contact uh, it does not hit. Okay, second attack on the same guy. I don't think that's going to hit. I don't think so <clears> either. And then the last attack is going to be the guy next to me. Okay. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> but I'm going to say... <laughs> <laughs> so you knock your arrow, and then you shoot, the arrow, the arrow explodes on the dragon skull. I'm going to say, no, I, I, I sat on the, my, my, the shaft of them, and they're just... Uh... Yeah, you definitely sat on the shaft, fool. Flying a little wonky? Shaft. Yeah, the, it's just a little wonky. <laughs> Doesn't the skull take up, like, half the hallway? He hit oh, it! I hit it! <laughs> <laughs> That's my point, fool, is that out of all the spots to hit, you hit the spot. No, no, I think I did damage. It still looks like it's almost dead, I think. <laughs> right, attack? Oh, so yeah, he... for sure. I mean, I saw it hit. I don't... You know. Yeah, the it's non-magical not members there. of this group are just, you know, I don't know how you deal with them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. Right, hey, Simone? Quit, Eric. <laughs> quit, uh... Making a test more extreme, all right? Extremist. <laughs> Quit grooming a test, all right? <laughs> there aren't any non-magical people in this party. <laughs> Just look at him. You're like eyeball Kaifar. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him side eye. <laughs> um, Radicalizing, that's the word I'm thinking of. There it is. <laughs> I would like to do a... Uh, knowledge history check on yep. the skeleton, the big ones. Okay. <clears throat> I'm curious, you know, what, anything about them, but specifically what are, what were they before they became um, enchanted skulls? Yeah, uh, I really hope you roll high on this one, honestly. Uh, let's... Oh, well, don't hold your breath. Okay. All right, all right. So my history is a plus three, so 14, 15, 16, 17. <clears throat> Galfast has seen much of the world, and in on many of the dusty shelves of the libraries where his maps lie, lie other information, and he's been sent to rem other remote and forgotten locations in the past. He, from his travels and his studies, know that... These skeleton, these dragon heads in particular, were likely at one time trophies of the civilization that lived here. Um, on a seventeen, you know that, and as a reminder, this is not new information to the party. You know that some dragons fought alongside humanity in the ancient wars, and there is the possibility that these were at one time allied to whoever these people were, but, you know, your studies weren't that specific. As far as their animation goes, um, there is a long-established magical practice of reanimating the dead, and the more complex the target... The skeleton, anybody, you know, who, if a task gave 
you know, some years of his life to, to devoting and study, like, he could figure out how to animate a regular corpse. But to animate something like a dragon skull and to maintain its, to give it a, a breath ability for it to have that much energy in it, uh, it must have been a particularly powerful being whose magic bestowed this on them. But there are only a handful of those uh, beings, you know, whose names have ever been recorded in history, and to your knowledge, none of them are alive today. Okay. To your knowledge. My knowledge is pretty good. <laughs> 17. Okay. I'm done after that. Great, we're back at the top. Kythar's okay. up, Reed's on deck. Uh, Kythar, this guy's still alive, right? Yeah, he's got one little man behind him. He's gonna take one little man shot on this guy. All right. Yeah, I'm sure it'll take. I'm sure it'll get him. I hope. I think so. anything above like a five gets him. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's above a five, so. There plus twelve plus eight, so. A natural 20? Oh, yeah, that hits. I think anything yeah. above three hits these guys then for, for okay, Kythar. Cool. But yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. And six damage. Okay, that means I got to roll his hit points to see what okay. how strong this individual... <laughs> yeah, apparently this is where they buried all the old people. Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, this 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 equally frail skeleton very easily shatters apart. Uh, even Kaithar was like, oh, <laughs> like he was surprised. <laughs> it, uh, it it crumbled so easily. Uh, he will then take the rest of his movement going. Uh, he looking turns around, looks at the big skull. His eyes are so wide, like his pupils are basically his entire eyes because he sees like a huge prey. And then he's just gonna lift his axe or his hammer above his head and just scream down the hallway. Ah! Five, three, five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Oh, he's got thirty feet. There you go. Twenty-five, thirty. Sweet. Uh, and that and that will be Kaithar's turn. Reed is up. Sigbert's on deck after the baddies. Good question, David. Did that guy do damage to me? I don't remember. <clears throat> uh, he did. He did three whole damage. He rolled his minimum. Thanks, I missed it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me count these tiles. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45. 45 will put me um, not at... It'll put me right there. There you go. Uh, um, not not disengaging, then? I am disengaging. You are disengaging. Cool. Yeah, to make it there. Um, and I'm going to yell over to the other people, Hey, do you want me to hold up here, or do you need me down there? You should come this way, Reed. There's big, big fuckers down this way. You got it! <laughs> In six more seconds! And I'll be done. Whenever you get the chance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, rush. <laughs> then that does bring us to the bad guys. And at this point, it's obvious to everyone in the hallway that the horde of skeletal bodies is making its way down the the hallway behind them. Like that that scratching, that scrabble that scrabbling, uh the the clanking and clattering of, of bones. You guys hear just a cacophony of that behind you. Over Reed's booming voice. Uh and the bloodied skeleton who who got the shot on that skeleton it's bloodied who didn't quite finish him off uh, me last campaign or last campaign. oh last, last session. session last session sounds good um he's going to oh cool he's going to uh keep on galfast for a big nine to hit he missed. Yeah, yeah. These those guys are not uh, not real not real known for their their prowesses. Is, is. Um, All right. Anybody else besides Kythar helping Wilb? 
Uh, they're, they're moving up. Uh, a right. Tesk, Reed, Reed is at the back of the hallway, and he specifically asked, do you want me to hold him here, or do you want me up there? And a Tesk is like, you should probably come up here. So, you know. All right. So you've got... But, is that, uh, is that a, did you ask that question to everybody? Some more? I, don't, I don't know what I've been doing this whole time. <laughs> no, I asked that. I asked that to everybody. No, uh, that oh. was not. That was not in character. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I took all my shots, but. Uh... No, I know. I'm just messing. I'm messing. Uh, it's a joke. That's why it was out of character. That is okay. So I've got a 29 to hit Wilb from the skeleton head on death store. And then I need yep. him and Kythar to both make a reflex save for me. What? Okay. Uh, the 29 hit. Yeah, I figured, then... it, I figured it would. Because um, I thought a 28 hit last time. <clears throat> and then for Kythar, that's a 23. Nothing. Cool. And for Will, it's a nat 20. Sweet. Uh, Kythar does not have evasion, correct? Let me make sure he might. Okay. Um, no, he does not have evasion. Sorry. Okay, so he's gonna. Uh, so okay, Will is taking. I'm uh, nothing if not consistent. I think it was 13 last time. It's 14 this time. Uh, oh, from the it. from the bite on the dragon skull, and then the smaller wounded skull opens its mouth and emits a uh, a you know, line of combustion, which goes about halfway down this hallway, uh, well past Kythar. Uh, Wilb is able to expertly dodge out of the way. <laughs> Kythar is able to dodge most of the way out of the way, but he is still going to, <clears throat> he is still going to take half of super low roll, half of 10. So five whole, uh, necrotic damage from the, okay. Uh, from the breath weapon of the wounded dragon skull, uh, okay. and the last ones, the last one's just floating around. The last one's just floating around back there. Uh, so we are. Oh, excuse me. And then I've got a. Uh, I've got a. There's a flurry. There's a flurry of arrows against Reed. And I doubt any of those are going to hit, but you know, they could, I guess. You may try. <laughs> no. Oh. But basically. Not not basically straight up anything short of a nat twenty misses Reed on this uh, from mm -hmm. these guys so I figure there'll be one that'll come eventually uh, nope but so there's clattering of skulls clattering of arrows there's just like a it's a it's a veritable war zone behind you guys and Reed's just back there by himself uh, laughing uh, but that is it for <laughs> the bad guys uh, Sigbert's up Arthur's on deck okay I'm gonna. I'm gonna take my free five. I'm not. Am I close enough to this guy to? Yes. Hit? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna that, take a swing. That's here. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna do a standard attack on him. Okay. Sounds great. They see is not real high, but they are just bones, so they're a little harder to hit. Oof. Final up. That would be. Hey, let me just make sure. A 16. Ah, meets or exceeds their AC. Roll your damage. Okay, here we go. Hell yeah. It'd be six damage. Six damage means I have to roll his hit points. Is he also an old man skeleton? Survey says. <laughs> yes, he is. Huh. This is crazy. Nice. Um, Turns out you only bury the elderly. I know. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, they had to be back here somewhere. Um, they couldn't. They couldn't all be war heroes that got buried down in this crypt, right? Um, so yeah, you you slice right through him and send him to the dead dead man's equivalent of Davy Jones' locker. But uh, and yeah, I believe you still have your movement. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna move. Can I move? Past, um, yeah, yeah, past you can the, move through the, friendly tiles. You still got to spend the movement to move through them, but they're you can pass through them like they were empty if they're uh, occupied by a friend. Uh, anything else, my friend? Um, no, that'll be my turn. Sick, sick. 
Arthur is up. Simone's on deck. Okay, Holding an empty gun. Good. Yeah, so he's going to take an action to reload. Cool movement, I assume. Uh-huh, and then he'll shoot the big guy. Sweet. He's more than 30, but less than 60 from where you're at, I think. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just assume it's 80. Uh, I guess he is 80 feet, yeah. But he's yeah. probably 80 on the nose, so go for it. Uh, 14. Uh, against his standard AC, correct? Because you're outside of 30 feet? I'm outside of 30. Uh, on a 14, you watch it impact against him and a bit of bone fall away, but you uh, can hear the distinctive sound of a ricochet as it bounces off. No damage. Not a hit. Uh, reloading. That's Will like, like ducks. <laughs> Will like ducks. Oh. <laughs> Like you almost got hit because it is a, a hallway, so it's like it's gonna be really loud. <laughs> I'm gonna say <clears throat> it's just too dark down there for us to see. I don't know if we could light it up, that'd be much better. I mean, there's like two flaming skulls down there, kind of lighting it up. Well, well, I got a cataract, so. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you shooting a bow, fool? <laughs> What's a cataract? <laughs> Oh, funny. His eyes are all fucked up, fool. That's some experimental, like, <laughs> magic? Nah, fool, his eyes are all fucked up. That's what that means. DM, <laughs> we know cataracts. Uh, you might, with your actual background at a real school, might know what cataracts is. Hmm, I need to consult my journal from the university days. Love yeah, it. I had an optometrist that uh, diagnosed me, so. <laughs> Works in a small town. <laughs> <laughs> How many other comments? <laughs> uh, then, without further ado, Simone, you are up, and Atesk is on deck. Okay. Will will take his two attacks against Mr. Two Big Man. Two probably do it if they both hit. Let's, uh... Actually, probably even if just one of them hits. Okay. Um, the lowest be uh, 18. Misses. Uh, but go ahead and roll one of your damage. It might it might be enough. Okay. Let's see. Uh, eleven. So that's a uh, eleven plus. Ooh. Oh, nice. Seven, 17 damage. <clears throat> and while I'm cr scratching this name off of my list, you can narrate to us what it looks like as Will destroys a skeleton, uh, skeleton head of a dragon that is twice the size of him. Um, um, Will, uh, Will, like, runs up the front of the skull while it kind of, like, tries to like toss him off and will was like holding on with his talons and uh you know because the the dragon lost its lower jaw it's like you know it, it's kind of unwieldy but then it's, uh, once the right moment happens will launches himself off of the dragon head and comes down with all of his force pushing like the bottom half of his skull boom right into the con uh, into the uh stone floor uh stone floor and uh, Will crashes through his skull and, uh, you know, uh, swipes the magic away and instantly, like, uh, all the red flames, like, dis or blue flames, like, disappear. Sick. Uh, love it. And for the first time, the rest of the party can see. I mean, you guys can't see into the darkness. It's pretty dark, but <clears throat> you guys can actually see down the hallway. There's only a large skeleton filling skeleton head instead of a small one filling the way. Uh, you still have Simone proper and Wilb's movement, mm -hmm. if you like. Uh, you are, this guy's also threatening you. I just couldn't get him that close because of the other skeleton guy, so. That's fine. And the other skeleton guy is still not moving? He's, uh, no, no, he's, he is, he, but he's, he's doing this kind of thing. He's just, like, kind of floating around the room. Oh, you know? okay. As in, he hasn't engaged in combat. So yeah, correct, correct. <clears throat> All right, so Wilb's gonna... 
just stay right there for now, I guess. And um, Simone is going to take a free five, then five, 10, 15, 20. Let me see. So that's 80 feet away, right? And so Simone, let me make sure that's within my range. Yep, he's going to take an attack onto the big <coughs> wounded dragon skull. Yep. Let's see if I can do it. Not bad. Unnatural 20. Unnatural 20, I believe, will still... Yes, still hits. Haha, <laughs> okay. D8. Four damage. Can you narrate the damage for me really quick? <laughs> that, that four damage? Yes, because I need to prove a point to Galfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Will, you know, goes out and he takes a swipe at this guy and he gets him right across the face and, like, where the nose hole is for the dragon, he, like, pulls a piece of that back and a little bit of it, like, flies off, and with the blue-violet flame, like, spinning, tumbling through the air, it lands, and a little puff of fire comes out of his face. And when I shot it, I'm going to, like, spin around and shoot all obnoxiously. <laughs> and then it hits and does that, and be like, see, fool, it's hella easy. And be all, like, proud of myself. What what contraption even is that? Is that This is, this gonna, is a, the classic one. Uh, I'm going to be like... Uh, uh, this one's broken in full and you can clearly see it's been like repaired with like different types of rope and pieces of gum everywhere. <laughs> and, like, There's a shoestring, a boot lace yeah, yeah, tied yeah, around yeah. it. <laughs> the, uh, the medieval equivalent to Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> These young people with their crossbows can <laughs> can't pull back a 70 pound bow. <laughs> Arthur is going to like, turn around. Just, like he's, <laughs> you, you see him priming the pan and just like <laughs> mid prime, just, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to like squint my eyes and do a big spit of tobacco. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the end of my turn. Uh, I love, I'm loving all the, all the flavors and interactions between you guys. Um, <laughs> a test gets up. Galfast is on deck. Let's go tape. Take his free five, and then just 30 feet. Up to there. And I'm going to go with the tried and true magic missile. All right. Bombs away. Yes. Bombs away. Just roll your damage, Bombs good here. sir. <clears throat> As Kythar and Will to have these four bolts of streaming magic come screaming over their heads. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be 11 damage. That's 11 damage. Pretty good. Uh, he is still wounded. Uh, but all four of them impact against his large dragon skull. See, that's that's how you do it. <laughs> I'm all white. <laughs> give, the, give the giant skull a suntan. Like shoot him with the magic. <laughs> Press magical folk. It's super easy. You forget, fool, I am magical. What the fuck do you think oh, Will is? I'm not <laughs> talking about you. Oh. If you catch my drift. <laughs> <laughs> well to be fair, fool, they're not the uh they're not the targets of the uh, giant dragon lizard bird things. Rob's really been leading the uh, the team on that. <laughs> Should be thanking him after this. The pillar of the pillar of the community. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna correct myself and say Manta Drakes. I wrote it down. <laughs> uh, Atesk, are you done with your turn? Yes. yes then sir. Galfast is up and Kythar is on deck. Um, I would like to look for movement in the room to my right, the big open room. 
you don't have a very good uh, point of view right now. Would you like to move first? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I am going to move. There's too many people holding bows. Um, I'm going <laughs> to use one movement, which is 30. Um, and then while I pass, I'll do a look. A look okay, that's great. Give it a roll, or is it plain as day? Um, I, I will take a roll from you. Okay, I'm looking specifically for movement after getting that thing described to me. Yeah. So 22. Uh, on a 22, you do see movement, and you see the creature... Uh, like start to scramble out of the sarcophagi and then he like looks, makes eye contact with you, sees that he's being watched and just like, kind of like a cat, just like freezes. And it's just like sitting there with the with those huge discs as you move through, past, uh, and you know, just as you're about, uh, just as you're about clear, you, uh, you watch him uh, like spring out of the sarcophagi and run out of sight. Okay, I guess as soon as I see him, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stop and take a beat and say, it, "It's okay, little guy." Um, hmm. Is it is this an animal? Um, you can you can attempt an animal related skill on him. Yes. Let me think for a second. An animal. So I don't have any skills. I do have handle animal. So um, would it cost me an action to like um, toss a you know small beat piece of jerky from my pocket into the room? No, I'd give that to you as like your other check, as your other swift thing you can do in a turn, like pulling a lever, or opening a door. Uh, okay. So as as I'm walking through that gap, I'm gonna see it, say that, and then throw it out in the middle and say, it's okay. What I need to actually know specifically what you're throwing yeah. at him. A piece of jerky. Piece of jerky. So dried, dried meat. Um, I, I think I'd also like to see your animal handling check. I think I'd like to see one of those from you. Nice, nice. Um, him. On a 10, I, he like slowly creeps out and you can see that his, at the end of his arms and his legs both are many more than five digits. It's like they're all thumbs and there's like 13 of them at the end of each of his appendages. And they, and they all kind of like, you know, wiggle and, and, and they, they kind of like crawl in and of themselves. Like he's not really stepping his like digits are kind of like moving him on all four of his arms and legs. Um, but he just kind of like scampers over to it and like without taking his eyes off, you like leans down. You don't see a nose on this creature, um, but it has these like tendrils that are that are kind of like drooping off of it. And as he, you know, scooches down on it, the tendrils begin to like undulate and they. And then and then it's uh, and then you realize that it does have a jaw as the entire thing unhinges 180 degrees and just like rows of fucking teeth, uh, like dark, uh, rotting, uh, like uh, you know he's missing a bunch of them. They're chipped, uh, but he just like snatches it up real quick, and then like scampers back to his little uh, his little sarcophagi, puts himself under it up to the eyes, and is just like looking out from it. Would say, oh, he's just a little guy. He doesn't mean us any harm. <laughs> I'm going to take two shots on the skill, the la the big skeleton skull. Cool, sounds great. Hey, above a ten. Hold above a ten. Um, so under 100 feet plus nine, so it's over 20. Yeah, that 20 hits. Something. That hits. In the second one. Nice. Yeah. They're also 20. Great. They both hit. Roll damage twice. 
didn't think I'd make it this far. <laughs> what do I roll for damage? I, I, I've forgotten. <laughs> Seven total. Seven total. Well, my friend, seven damage is enough to bring this thing from wounded to bloodied. Uh, as, you know, your your arrows break against it uh, and send, you know, bits and shards sending out the back, you know, as it... Uh, as the they, they, they sail through the energy that, like, creates its breath weapon, and you watch them, like, you know, your arrows just kind of, like, burst into flames on the back end with bits of bone that come flying out. The, the old-fashioned bows are far superior to the new ones. <laughs> My family for as long as I'm just going to go on and on. <laughs> and then I'm done. Uh, then that brings us to Kythar and Reed's on deck. All right. Uh, Kythar kind of like slows down to a stop after seeing the dragon skull get crushed. Look over to the other one that's right there. And just kind of you see him like uh, clench his hammer again, throws his hammer up again and starts screaming, Ah! ah I hit! It. This is going to take a free five, five, ten, fifteen. Gets him close enough. And he's going to make two attacks because he has his hammer his hasty hammer his hasty hammer and he's not in rage so you know oh yeah, yes finally <laughs> two attacks lowest being 20 Hits. okay <laughs> <laughs> all right uh... so double damage roll them both Uh, that is 20 damage. 20 damage brings this thing all the way down to death's door. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's smaller. He doesn't, he's not as beefy as his big daddy friend over there. And you see him coming with this hammer on one side, and then you see, like, a blur on his hammer in his hands as it hits again. And then, uh, he's like, I kill, I kill, counts as this many, and he puts up a... You know, all five of his fingers. <laughs> I love it. And that will be the end of his turn. Uh, Reed is up. Sigbert's on deck after our baddies. Um, I'm going to look at him. Hey, uh, you're sure you want this? all these bones to start filling up this hallway? Who are you saying that to? Anybody who will listen, yeah, like, I think. <laughs> This, this I mean, group. as long as they're not moving. Puto. <laughs> uh, so you want me to kill them here? Uh, are they There's moving? I can hold them. There's a lot of them. Why don't you uh, come a little closer? I don't want you to get stuck back there. Uh, okay, I'll move. Here's what I'll do. I'll take a power attack on the guy in front of me. Okay. You got two. They're both... It's a two-man passageway, and they're filling it up. Um, uh, the one next to the statue. This one? Yes. Cool. Oh, I guess it, I didn't see the other statues. Under <laughs> I'm like, they're both <laughs> next to the statue. <laughs> um, oh, cool. That's a nat one. Uh, yeah, for the first time, Reed whiffs it, uh, and he, you know, swings through these guys, and it, like, knocks off his arm, but it's his off arm, and it just has zero <laughs> impact on it, but you, like, lose grip of your hammer, it, like, goes slamming into the statue, you gotta, like, run, just spring after it to recover it, or I guess you don't have a hammer, you have a, a sword. Sword, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but that, that's it for you, friend. Natural ones, they, uh, they blow. Do I... I, I lose my turn, but do I recover anything, or do I have to do that next turn? No, no, yeah, you get, you, yeah, you, you recover it all. It's fine. You're just, it's always just okay. for flavor. You just, you lose your whole turn doing the recovery process. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be just a minute. <laughs> uh, you're like blocking him with your with your forearm as you try to get your sword. Yeah. Like, for your glasses. Uh, uh, then I'm done. The wall of skeletons pushes against you, Reed, uh, and oh, it's getting tight. And attempts a thirty-six bull rush 
against you. Does that beat your bull rush? Uh, they rolled a 36? Yeah, against your CMD for bull rush. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. By, by how much did they get you? 10. 10. Um, and Reed gets pushed all the way back, almost past the hallway entirely, as the onslaught fills the way. Oh, shit. Hey, guys, it's gotta get busy! <laughs> Uh, and another f- onslaught of arrows, none of which hit Reed. That's it for our back line. Uh, front line is uh, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with Kaithar, I think, because he's the most recent strike. Uh, New meat for a fifteen to hit. Well, blow. Nope. Cool. His uh, AC is 16. If he was enraged, then we'd have a problem. Yeah, but I am going to need another reflex save from Kythar and Will, please. Okay. First one will be Will this time. All right. Fuck. Uh, Kythar is over 20. Uh, and... What specifically? Uh, he will be 22. Great. And Will has a great reflex. Uh, a natural 20 for Will. An unnatural 20 for Will. Um, I need to corn firm. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that will just save. So Will is going to take no damage. Kythar is going to take half um, of the breath weapon that this big boy is firing at him from behind. Um, and that is now going... Now he joins the fray. Yeah, you know, he's uh, he's got his own... He's got his own stuff. He's got his own things. Where are my fucking dice? Okay, there we go. Uh, for more substantial of a hit this time it's half of 21 for 10 damage kythar takes necrotic okay yeah. as will rolls out of the way everybody else just sees they can't see the source of it but uh the entire hallway is illuminated in blue violent flames from something coming from the room to the left uh and kythar is like furiously padding out his gear uh which some of which has caught fire in the process here and that is it for my bad guys. Uh, brings us to Sigbert. Arthur's on deck. All right. <clears throat> um, I'm going to move up. Well, I'm basically going to use both my movement and my free five to put me right there. Sick. Um... And that's close enough to see the uh, the third skull floating in the room. Okay. And then I'm gonna tap, kind of nudge, Kythar, mm-hmm. and go. Uh, Where you at, buddy? How many you got? <sighs> You're gonna see him like clearly struggling to come up with a number. Uh, uh. And he's going to just kind of go, uh, he's just going to like flash his hands like this. Like, uh, uh. And Sigrid's just going to give him a thumbs up <laughs> and, and that'll be his turn. <laughs> yeah, he goes, more than you. <laughs> oh. Arthur is up and Simone is on deck. Hey, Arthur's going to take a free five. And then his 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And uh, he will continue attacking, except this time, on uh, the Death Doors fella. Okay. At 45 feet away, you're still going to be uh, not quite against his touch. But go ahead and roll your attack. Final? 14 for 80 feet. 
Yeah, makes contact with him, uh, but another sound of a ricochet as it hits one of the curved surfaces of his body and seems to glance off. No damage. Does not hit. Good turn. Then Simone is up. Atasca's on deck. Okay, this guy's on death's door. That he is. Uh, Wilb is going to take two attacks onto this man, or onto this smaller skeleton head. Lowest being 18, highest being 24. Uh, the 18 will not hit, the 24 will. Okay, in this instance, he'll take the rest of his attacks in. Uh, then that is 14 plus 9, so was it 23? Uh, they'll both hit, so 3 out of your 4. Okay, and then 2, 3. So that's 14 plus... 14 plus 6, 12, 18, 18 plus... So that's... Uh, All I need to hear is 18 plus. You, you got it, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was probably going to land somewhere in the 40s. Yeah, dude. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I want Will at this point just to be like one punch, like, and it goes through, like, uh, you know, and people like punch through walls and like sitcoms or like shitty movies. Ah, just like that. But it's going to be like right through him. Like Will doesn't even, it, it feels like it doesn't even, you know, stop his, he's blow. punching through paper. Exactly. Yeah. yeah just boom. Mike, Mike Tyson. Like, yeah. Yeah. I know. And then as that time, exactly. You see the skull recoil as chips, just, uh, spray Kythar and, uh, and Sigbert. <laughs> Yeah, the impact is so great for a minute. You guys think it's another breath weapon, and then you realize it's not. It's just this thing exploding outward. <laughs> and how you just have, like, the top of its skull just kind of sitting, you know, <laughs> on the stony ground now. Oh, man. And uh, Simone is going to take his free five. Yeah, you're moving gal fast. Oh, I am taking moving gal fast. Thank you. Uh, three, five, uh, five, 10, 15, 20. And then he's going to do another 10, 15, 20. And that will be the end of my turn. Sick. Then brings us to a test. Gal fast is on deck. And yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to take my free five and then I'm going to take... I'm going to take pretty much, I'm going to take two movements, sprint, and kind of walk up next to the wall on this side, following Sigbert. And uh, say, hey, good, good work, guys, killing the big skeleton. What's what's ahead of us again? Um, there's another skeleton, fool. Oh, another one of those big heads or one of the tiny head ones? Big head. Another big head. And I take a step back. <laughs> and I have my turn. Uh, Galfast is up. Kythar's on deck. Okay, I'm going to take two shots on the skeleton. So looking back at Reed, does it look like arrows are going to help him in a situation? Or is there such a mass that... Uh, just you have dark vision, run? correct? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, so... Because I only see two skeletons on mine, but I know you described it as, like, a mass. Yeah, you would be able to see that there are more than two skeletons there. Okay. Uh, could I take a shot at the one, the closest one between he and I to make a hole for him? Absolutely. Okay, I'll take two shots on the skeleton between he and I. Great. We both can't do it. <laughs> uh, uh, I think my average roll tonight is like a three. 
Yeah, dude, that's it's. I'm sorry, bud. <clears throat> right there with you. Hey, at least it's not to save my life. Well, at least I haven't entered the big room yet. But yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, uh, then with with that, you pull your bow too taut, and the string looses itself, and you have to take the rest of the, your six seconds to pull your bowstring back and restring your bow. Can I do a check? Traditionally, ones end your turn critically, Aaron. But I'm feeling sympathetic okay. today, so I will give you. I will give you a check. It's so sweet. It's an easy. It's a. It's not a. I w- so after uh, breaking my bow, I would like to think, do a, uh, recall on nature if I've ever seen one of those little the little guy before. Uh, sounds great. Go ahead and roll your da- uh, roll your 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 knowledge it's nature. Just as. This is actually more effective than taking a shot. So, oh, big seven, big seven. Dang. At a five, though. That's a ten 12. eventually. Over on, twelve. Uh, it's a, over ten though. On, on a twelve, <laughs> Galfast yeah. has never seen one of these things specifically before. However, um, there are. I don't want to say this. There are creatures which are born of the plane of the undying who are inherently you know the the game term we have for them is undead right um mm-hmm. this thing is not undead this thing is a living creature of some sort that you've never seen before but you watched it breathing and you know that that is a trait that that undead things do not do they don't breathe uh, you also threw food at it, and it ate, which, again, is not something that undead things do. They don't eat, uh, at least not for sustenance. Um, and so, though you've never seen one of these things before, you have a suspicion that it's it's something like a side effect of whatever's happening here and is not directly involved with whatever the magic is that's reanimating all of these skeletons. Mm. Okay, and then I'll be done. I have to be done. Talking's always free. You can do that on somebody else's turn. Um, does I bring think us back. Kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> does bring us back to Kaithar uh, and Reed's on deck. Which is Anthony. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Sorry, I keep forgetting sometimes. Um, so Kaithar, um, this guy's flying, right? He is. He's uh, he's only about ten feet in the air, though. He's ten <laughs> feet in the air, huh? Yeah. Five, five. It's got more room to maneuver in the actual room than and, it did in the hallway. And these are uh, those are those and... are just for flavor. There are definitely bones. Still in here. You guys can't really see, but as soon as Kaithar turns the corner, I'm going to reveal the rest of the room for you. Is it considered rough terrain? No. Okay, on the staircase at this location or this location, what's the height of the staircase? Uh, we're going to say for the sake of sake of simplicity, it goes up uh, it goes up five feet for every five foot square, just so that it's easy to count. So this this would be so if I got up right here, he would only be five feet away from me then. He'd be five feet in the air, yeah. Five feet in the air ahead of me, which is a I can attack him at that point. Correct. All right. Okay. So I'm going to use all my movement, and I counted it out. All my movement would take me to there, but I'm going to end up right there. You go. And I'm going to take all my movement, and you're going to see Kythar. Uh, oh god. Um. Uh, oh god. Kythar not knowing what he's doing, and just sees another big enemy. <clears throat> uh, runs to the stairs and with his hammer and his ah screaming. Cool. And that will be Kythar's turn. Then that puts us at Reed, who is currently 
who his his pathway into this hallway is currently blocked. He will either need to destroy a skeleton or push him out of the way in order to gain access to it. What would we like to do? That's what I'm going to do. That's Ball what I'm rush. Do. No, I'm just going to hit him. <clears throat> okay. 18. Hits. Roll your damage. Actually, I don't think you need to. I think even a one for you will kill these little guys. It is an automatic 14 damage. Yeah, dude. Very dead. Uh, you punched a hole. Um, I'm going to pivot on that hole. And I'm going to make my stand for now and keep these guys, keep this giant horde off of these guys back because I've seen that they can push me around a little bit and I don't want to get overrun and stop them. So, uh, Reed's going to take a stand and he's going to look at the, the horde of zombies and going to say, it's time to die. Again. Reed, keep coming. Again. Um, and I'm going to make a power <laughs> on on the second Mr. Man in front of me. Okay, sounds good. Uh, just please note for me real quick, you did, one of the attacks of opportunity as you slid away was a natural 20, so you are going to take uh, six damage as you pivot away from Is it a, do, do I, I'm still in a threatened square though, right? Do Not for the ones impact? that were on the back side of the hallway. You have moved away from some of oh, this pile okay. of zombies, okay. just not, or skeletons, just not all of them. Cool, What's, what is damage? Uh, six. Okay. And now now you can do your power attack. Uh, 26. 26. Hits. Dead? Uh, yeah. You can't <laughs> not kill them if you hit. Um, okay. Uh, and I'm done. Okay. Great. Uh, that brings us to the baddies. We've been going for about an hour and a half, so I'm going to stop us here for mm. our traditional 10-minute break. Uh, it's 8.20. We'll save by 8.30. We'll be back at it. Sounds good. All right. I'll be, we'll be back. Bye.
Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm live, just as a, a full disclosure. And Sigbert is up. Arthur's on deck. Uh, um, weren't the did weren't the bad guys gonna go before me? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I I usually end up with bad guys, but. But it's not them. It's okay. Uh, there's not a there's not a whole lot that's gonna happen here um, because mostly this thing's gonna turn around and chomp the fuck out of Kythar or attempt to. Um, and that is a mm-hmm. twenty-two to hit. A hundred percent that hits. Yeah, I figured it might. Figured it might. Uh, not a lot, but significant. Uh, 22 damage. Oh. Uh, as he just bears down on Kythar and fucking just chow, chows down. Just wants to turn him into minced fucking meat. Uh, and... That, that is... Oh, and then there's, then there's my, my horde back here. Uh, so, Reed, I want you to... So you're watching somebody stream, right? Yes. Would you confirm for me uh, that you have five feet available to your right and five feet available to your left with where you put yourself? Yeah. Cool. But uh, if they many, get past, how I many attacks of opportunity make attack, do you have? Right? right. How many reactions do you have right now? Just one as, as per standard? Um, let me see. You'd have to have the feet. Um, I think it's called the first. Thought- yeah, attacks. I don't think I have anything. Um, it should be a feat or a special quality. Yeah, negative. I do not. I thought about taking it, though. Well, But I did not. In situations like this, it would be very useful. You can take your first attack of opportunity on... You can pick right or left one of the columns attempting to move past you. Um, right. Okay. Take it. Actually, I can't see. I can't see what's behind me. That um, who's? It, it actually, I don't think it's gonna matter. Uh, uh, Galfast and one of the are the two closest to you. Okay. That is a twenty-one. <laughs> Hits and I'm sure destroys him if your minimum damage is fourteen. Um, some of them might be getting through, but I'll chase him down. Twenty-five. Just run. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Uh, these dudes are streaming past you, bud. You move out of your choke point. Uh, and they're they're disinterested in you. They're much more interested in the dudes going on down that what's going on down there. You've got your your flurry of arrows coming in out of the darkness in the back. No natural 20s in the lot, but uh, you got skeletons streaming past you, bud. Can I see them now? Yeah, 100% as they're moving past you. Like you oh, it's just do- those, it's those It's those three. Oh, yeah, we don't see that. Oh, now we see them. Oh, okay. Now we see them. Okay. I forgot I had to pick them up and set them down. Uh, oh, yeah, that's definitely a stream now. Yep. That qualifies mm-hmm. as a stream. It was always a stream. Uh, there's been a cacophony of noise of bone scraping on bone and, and, uh, obvious movement and, and chambers filling are the types of language your DM has been using with you. Uh, and that's it for the bad guy. Sigbert, you're up. Arthur's on deck. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> um, I know this changes everything. Um, well, I'm going to move both my, I'm going to use both my movements. Um, put me right here. 
Um, and then that'll I'll, that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, Arthur's up. Simone's on deck. There are skeletons uh, Arth- streaming down this hallway. Yeah, Arthur's gonna <laughs> just keep running. <laughs> He's seeing Reed get overrun. But does he is is Reed hurt? Uh, I've only taken six damage. Okay, Arthur's not nearly as concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sorry. You'll see Arthur take uh, two of his movements. <laughs> We're just leaving Reed. <laughs> In all fairness, Reed has deflected like three dozen blows at this point and countless arrows. Like you know, it's not like it's not like he's getting chopped I'm, I'm a... on by a giant dragon skull or anything. <laughs> Do we have any magic that can get him out? I mean, I think there's like an... In- he stopped and there's an infinite number coming. I mean, uh, now would be a good time. I hope that if there were ever a time to turn me into a bomb, it would be now. <laughs> you but, could pray. Yeah, maybe that'll help. I mean, I can't technically pray because I have to stop. And all Don't that you have stuff, like an so. undead, like a shockwave? You have... You, you, I've used all of them to heal people. Yeah. To heal Kythar. Oh, Kythar took six damage? Let me top you off there. <laughs> if I recall in the last encounter, uh, it wasn't Simone that took a... But Will had taken some damage, and a Tesk had taken a chunk of damage, too. I can heal my Eidolon, though. Oh. Well, there you go. And I have some health pots I'll tell, left. I'll tell and, Kythar to And I have health potions... <laughs> And and I have this thing called Life Link, where I can transfer my mm-hmm. life to my Eidolon. Uh, okay, so I, I can know. just pop a potion. Uh, cool. Even I have forgotten whose turn it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we just had the bad guys go right. No, it's no, uh, it's my turn just yeah. finished. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you, Arthur. Yeah, uh, Arthur so- looked at Reed. There was a <laughs> implicit. Just go. Just, okay. And then Arthur took off. Great. Uh, then Simone, you are up and Atesk is on deck. Okay. Um, Will is going to being already 10 feet in the air. Yeah, he is. Uh, going to take his movement. His free five. <laughs> the <laughs> five, 10, 15. 20, 25, 30. I'm assuming I'm within that a threatened square. To the huge enemy, yes. Great. I will now take two attacks on the said enemy. Roll them. Lowest being. Twenty two. Meets or exceeds. Uh, okay, so, so both. Yeah. Yep, and then it's gonna be. Come on, blow this guy out of the water. Twelve. Nineteen plus. Seven. So was that twenty-five? No. Nineteen, 19 plus, plus seven, seven is twenty-six. Twenty-six. Sorry. Uh, it's all good. Uh, which will wound him. Ooh, he has now been wounded. Wounded, you wound me. So I cut, he's basically facing Kythar, and I come up behind him, and cats wipe the shit out of him. Yes, you do. Uh, Simone. Let me see what I got here. Let me see what I got here. Oh, it's touch. Why do you have to be so far away? Um, okay, from where I'm at, could I see past Reed? From where you're at, could you see past Reed? Yes. 
Is there light no, for me none, to see there? None. Zero. Reed can't even see past Reed. Does he have a torch out? Nope. He's got his weapon in one hand and a shield in the other. Mm-hmm. Could I see... <clears throat> I feel like it's like a Game of Thrones episode. Uh, can I see right there? Yes. I'm going to cast Black Tentacles. <laughs> right there. It worked so well the that's last funny. time. Oh, that's great. Um... <laughs> Uh, and that is, uh, it's duration seven rounds, and it's a 20-foot radius. 20-foot radius. 15, 20. 20. Uh, I'm going to yell at Reed. I'm all, those are for the putos getting past you, fool. I know you can, can I get, get past? I know can you I... can get past those fucking black tentacles, fool. I can't really, like, control them, though. I'll try. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me make sure I have all my numbers right on the black tentacles. Yeah, and I'll just sure. make notes over here so that I can make my saves. We've been doing batches of stuff. I know you get yeah. a grapple check, and then you get some damage after a full yeah. round of them being grappled. So what's the exactly. DC for their grapple? Uh, DC for the grapple. No, no, you mm. roll the grapple. Excuse me. I, I just check it. Um, what's their DC yeah. get stuck? Or not get stuck if they try to move through it. Uh, if the tentacles succeed in grappling a foe, the foe takes 1d6 plus 4 damage and gains the grapple conditions. So if they don't, uh, uh, I guess the the there's oh, no Oh, yeah, that's right. You just void your grapple as soon as they enter Yeah, exactly. Uh, the deal. So I'm going to have you roll by halves, right right half and left half. So go ahead and roll two okay. checks. Let me make sure I'm getting it all right. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's capital. coming back to me. Because I remember trying to move guys into it and having them stop right at the edge because you were grappling them as soon as they were entering the zone. Yes. Okay, yeah. so first roll. Uh, that's a 22. 22 will grapple. Uh, for the other side. Okay. Uh, uh, that's a 20 then. Uh, a 20, I believe, will still grapple. I just need to double check their CMD. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Going to grapple. Got him. <laughs> have you moved? Do you have an action left? Uh, I do have an action left, yes. I have a movement action left. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> hey, toss, toss me that grappling tool you have. Uh, I'm like, how do you know about that, fool? You told me about it. Ah, shit. In the camp. Uh, I'm going to ru uh, rustle, rustle around, and I'm going to feel uh, for Monza's things in my, sat in my backpack. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to use my six seconds to ruffle around, and then uh, can I throw it at Galfast? Uh, yeah, and for clarification, grapple thing. What what is your grapple thing? Uh, the enchanted item, the enchanted grapple or the ninja star Sweet. that teleports. Cool. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I just wanted to, for clarification, I just didn't remember if there was yeah. anything else you guys had. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely use, use your movement to find that and toss it at Galfast. Okay, and I do that. Yeah, and I want to like use it so it like teleports right next to the stone wall that he's in, like gotcha. hits right there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, da, like a ninja star, and it's, it slams into the rock right next to you. There you go, fool. Reflex. Good job for once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that'll be uh, the end of my turn. A task is up. Galfast is on deck. <clears throat> yeah. Task is going to move up and peek around the corner. And then I will cast. You know, I'll do another Scorching Ray on the big guy. Cool. Give it a go. Two, two rolls, right? Yeah, I've got two beams right now. Cool. Two touch attacks. Uh, very low touch AC. Very large target. Huge target even. 
Uh, I don't even need to see your modifiers. Those both hit on the dice. Uh, roll your damage. Actually, can you can you confirm a crit on a touch attack? Uh, is it a touch attack or is it a spell? I don't think there's spell. I don't think there's spell crit in Pathfinder. I think that's right. I think that's right. Uh, yeah. So go ahead and roll your damage twice. Whatever you got. Okay. So we're going to roll them all at once this time. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah, the worst. A spell that requires an attack roll can score a critical hit. It is a touch attack. He had to roll an attack roll for it to land a touch A special attack. attack that requires no attack roll cannot score a critical hit. If a spell causes ability damage or drain, the damage or the drain is double on a crit. No, oh, the damage is just doubled. Uh, so oh, I, saw that. Was, I rolled. Your total was twenty one, right? Twenty two. Twenty two. So we'll have that as eleven on your average, doubled. So we'll call it thirty three damage. Does that sound fair? Uh, that sounds perfectly fair. That's what I was going to suggest. Great. Then thirty three damage will bring it to bloodied. All right, you guys. You know, I think you've got this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and uh, help out feed, maybe, or at least help him get to us. I'm gonna be fine. Just don't wait I, for me. I think I can help him. Uh, is there a spell you have that you could use, or? I mean, I was thinking maybe another lightning bolt if it got too bad, but we'll stay nearby. Yes. Maybe yeah, huh. I'll just I'll stay back here. I can reach down the hallway. It's not that much of a it task. Let's go the pylons, and then you'll see Arthur point out some pylons. I'll go on the right. You go on the left. Maybe we can deactivate them. Okay. Yep. I'll help with that. I can't move anymore other than around the corner. So that's the end of my turn. Okay. Great. Then Galfast is up, and Kaithar's on deck. Um, I'm going to. <clears throat> Um, so I, I would like to move and to shoot that thing back so that Reed can grab it. How <clears throat> can I move and do that? Should I move first and then shoot it? Am I going to have to like aim it? Um, I, w I want it to hit the statue behind him, you know, so it's like at his head level. So it's a top rope he can hold on to as he goes across the, um, the tentacle pit. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make you roll to attack since you've got a specific target that's like 100 feet away in the darkness that you can't technically see very well but it's a very modest ac it's a large statue and it's not moving so okay and i do have i ha i do have the throw anything yeah cool so then you can just roll and take your your base attack you, you took throw anything wow that's great well i don't think i have throw anything but i think it's built into one of my skills it's cool, man. Yeah, just roll, I, I roll the dice, things. add your, your base attack bonus to it, and, uh, and it's a very modest right. AC. We were like three rows, three ones in a row trying to get Reed, so let's give this one a try. It's not a one. <laughs> um, base attack bonus is plus eight, so 14. That is enough to hit a statue down the hall. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Just celebrating. Um, can I, I still take a movement and like unfurl the rope as I go to keep it in the same spot? Or am I, can I not move now? Um, actually, that's a good point. I don't know how many feet of rope are on that and what the range of it actually was. Does somebody have the, the, info sheet for that magic item somewhere i do not it was lost in my notes when i rebuilt my computer i just remember how it works i don't remember the title and i have googled it i've been able to find out the actual title traditionally ropes are 60 feet so i'm going to rule in this instance it's got a 60 foot rope attached to it which means that it's out of galfast hands but not by that now, i'll say that you had to take a five foot step towards the pit to make sure you had enough movement, but then that would leave you with like just, just, just with the rope in your hand. Like you're holding the very end of the rope. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so then can I take my regular tax then since I can't move? Yeah, 100%. So I'm going to 
So I will take attacks. Let me think about this. He's going to disengage, which means he won't take attacks of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so the ones closest to me, then, I'll shoot at. Okay. Attack on each of the stacks. Hey! Yeah. So there's one. There it is. There it so is. It's, it's going to be like 10 damage. Okay, it doesn't confirm. Okay, the other one. <laughs> okay, it doesn't confirm. So this is attack number two. Uh, so attack number two is going to be at 14. At 14. Uh, 14 does not meet the AC of the skeleton. <laughs> Sweet, but the first one did, right? Yeah, first one absolutely Way exceeded did. and just missed it. Yeah. Okay, so 1d8 plus 1, 6 damage. Exactly enough. I'm on the board. I'm on the board. <laughs> Grab it, Reed. We'll get you out of there, no problem. I'm like, hang on to it. <laughs> um, and then as, uh, instead of a check, I would like to um, at some point during my seconds, I'm pulling out food, um, getting a handful of food ready. Okay. And then I'm done. Cool. Uh, brings us to the top. Kythar reads on deck. Okay, Kythar is going to make his three attacks yep. onto this guy yep. since he can actually reach him now. You guys are, you guys are almost there. It's going to be screaming the whole time. Ah! Kaitha hasn't gotten to claim one of the extra large targets yet. Lois being 18. 18 does not hit. Okay. And then the next one is 20. Le- next lowest one's 20. <clears throat> 21 just misses. Or 20 just misses, excuse me. Uh, okay, then the highest one is over 30. Which is 30 actually. <laughs> which definitely okay. hits. Roll your damage. All right. Uh, ten damage. Ten damage. He right. misses, misses, and then his blur boom bonks him. And he is still bloodied. Anything else, Kythar? Kythar puts his uh hammer up like a sand person with his gun <laughs> he just screams ah, ah! <laughs> as he's like st- lords above everybody on the staircase a whole uh, five feet up <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. and uh he'll end his turn. <laughs> okay which brings us to reed who's got you know who's got this rope in his hand uh i saw i saw that that reach up and grab motion on your camera there uh, what are you, what are you doing with this thing, man? This, you said this is a magic rope? Th- this is... It, but not in this circumstance. Oh, but not in this circumstance. Well, oh. it, it's a magic rope that shot out, like, teleported above you. Um, so it just, it, it, to you, you just, you just see it appear over your head. But it functions oh, as a regular rope. I right, see. David? If that's what Galfast, if that's how Galfast thinks this works... Gaffas um, has no idea how it works because he doesn't have the the, uh, the sheet for it has been lost like in, the, in a dead the, person's inventory. What looks like it's going to be the best way for me to go across this? Should I like try and slide down the rope, or can I just Re- try and hang on Re- to it? Roll me a wisdom check, please. Oh fuck! Hang on. Okay, here we go. That's a 14. Not terrible. You reach out to touch this rope, and you're looking at Galfast holding it on the other end, and you're, like, looking at it, you know, embedded in this statue ahead of you, and you're, like, feeling the magical energy of it. And you get a sense that this... that this item, whatever this is, is designed to go where you want it. Designed to go where I want it? You get a feeling that it will go where you want it to go. The rope itself will go where I want it to go. 
It's a, okay. you know, it's, it's an arbitrary, it's a, it's a loosey goosey feeling, but you, you're like, you get a sense that, that all it needs is some direction. I'm going to grab onto the rope and hang on to it with, put my stuff away, hang on to it with both hands and pray that it is going to retract it and pull me to Galfast. <laughs> You said it will go where I want it to go. You, uh, you grab onto this rope and you look back at Galfast holding, you know, holding the other end of the rope and, uh, the rope stays in your hands, but you watch like the, the spike end of it stick in the ceiling above Galfast and it, it is no longer embedded in the statue, it's now embedded in the ceiling above Galfast. And you're still... It's not reeling, but the anchor point has changed. It's in the ceiling above Galfast. Oh, God, what the fuck? How am I going to use that to get across? Um, what the fuck? Can I hold so, my... So, Rudder, to- go across the pit and... Pull yourself, you know, if you get, it's like, it's like a rope above quicksand, right? So you get stuck and you have a rope to hang on to. I could try that to, like, yeah, all right. Oh, God, I already, please let this work. And I'm just going to start walking across the pit. I, my first step, I'm going to hang on real fast. Tendrils don't. And do I roll a check? No. Or do I need uh, to see if I save? Anthony needs to roll to see if he grapples you with the tentacles first. Okay. okay. I've been rolling. I've been, I've been rolling loud. Right. And can I add uh, my strength on, check on, since I'm hanging on to the rope? On gang. We'll get there. Oh no. Uh, oh, you probably have a high AC though. Twenty-five. That actually does not grapple me. Oh. There you go. No need. Um, is it considered rough terrain? Uh, uh I believe so. Uh, Let me make sure. Yeah, usually it is. Okay. But you are not stuck, which means uh, you can move relatively freely. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's not rough yeah, terrain. Yeah, diff- it's considered difficult terrain while the tentacles last, yes. Okay, so let me count this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 would be one of your movements. And then if you're not disengaging and you're moving the rest, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80 to the other side of the pit. Okay, so I can only move a maximum of 45 if I, um, you know what? Mm, do I want to do it? Do it, come across. I mean, if I, if I disengage, can Galfast I disengage? Just, Galf, you can. Galfast has yelled at you, just oh, yeah. come across. Which yeah, I'll, I'll disengage. And disengage. Go, yeah, I'll go, I'll disengage and go as far as I can. Don't you go shorter if you disengage, though? 30, 35, 40, 45. Uh, this is the tile you can get to if you disengage. Yeah, you don't. You can go farther if you don't disengage. Yeah, I'll no, do that. Just run. Come as far as you can. Oh, you can go farther if you don't disengage? Because you disengage Correct. as a standard action. And in every turn, you can, take, you can trade your standard in for movement. So if you don't swing at anything and you don't disengage, you can move 80 feet to the edge of the pit. I just counted it out for you. If you do disengage... Oh, I see. I see. I had it backwards. Um, yeah, no, I'll do that then. And I'll take all the, you know, whatever attacks of opportunity. I yeah, it's, it's a shit ton, but uh, since they literally have to roll 20 to get you, man, I don't know that that's going to happen. There are 12 20s come out. Uh, oh, no. I just rolled the dice a shit ton of times and not a single 20. So you are golden as these things. I'm going to, like, bounce through there, like, hot feet, like, <laughs> dodging all the zombies. <laughs> 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 also david i sent you i think i found the you, old you item. did you did yeah um I, I the range is all i needed from that uh i remember the rest of the details about the item i just i'm not going to give them to you freely uh so reed you've used all your movement to move you've avoided the on the gauntlet of skeletons you're standing on the other side of the tentacles with galfast 
and the climbing rope in your hand still attached to the ceiling. What else are you gonna do with your turn? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the rope come back to my hand. And you you will the spike back into your hand. You just look up, wish it was released, and it curls up and is in your hand. I'm gonna hand it to Galfast. Thanks. Huh. And I'll be I don't know how this shit works. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder and I'm gonna look at him deeply in the eye, uncomfortably for like an extra second, and then I'm gonna be done. <laughs> I look away first. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Then, okay, that's my bad, guys. Uh, Simone, roll your damage. Okay. For the, the guys that are in, that are grappled. Uh, seven damage. Oh, means I got to roll some hit points. Kills one, kills two, kills three, kills four, five, six, seven. Ah, kills them all. Great. Um, <laughs> so all the skeletons get ripped apart that are currently held up. Uh, more of them attempt to move into their space. So go ahead and roll. Just roll wave one grapple check. I'm pretty sure you're going to get them all regardless. So you got their, their CMD is not particularly high. Yeah, it's uh, 25? Yeah, 25? That's, that's going to grapple them all and stop the onslaught. The only other important thing that's happening here is the onslaught of arrows. Half of which come in read. Ah, natural 20? Wow. Uh, that one was a natural 20 and natural ones exclusively. Um, that is huh. crazy. So uh, I guess I'll roll to confirm. Not a natural. The best damage. and the worst. That is seven piercing damage against Reed, uh, as one of those arrows finds purchase. Against Galfast, that is a uh, 19, a 14, and I don't think the rest of them matter. Uh, the 19 hits, the 14 does not. Uh, that is eight piercing damage, max. Um, and, uh, you know, easily another half dozen arrows fly past the two of you. More than just those two arrows were in this this batch, this bundle. Um, but only two of them strike you. And my big baddie... Uh, Kaithar, Sigbert, Wilb. Are you, I see that, thank you, Sigbert, you've put lightly mm -hmm. bloodied on yours. Uh, is Wilb bloodied uh, or wounded or what? He's bloodied. He's bloodied. Kaithar? Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. He's a... Uh... Uh, wait, wait, which is the one below? If he's under below... half his health, he's bloodied. He's bloodied, yeah. Okay. Is Kythar bloodied? Uh, Kythar is not bloodied. Okay. Yeah. This one uh, has the honor of being Wilbs. All right. And that is a... 21 to hit. That does not hit. Oh, great. Excellent. Then that is going to be it for this boy. And we're, uh, you know, actually, excuse me, while I'm on my AI, though, um, mm -hmm. there is a, I need a perception check from both Reed and Galfast, please. You know, I'll take one from Simone as well. Okay. Because you're turned backward looking at, the, at your pit, right? That was the last thing you did? Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, that's 23. A 21, 23. Huh. Um, 12. 12. Uh, great. Then... But I have low light vision and they don't. That's true. <laughs> uh, I have dark vision. Oh, fuck. Where are we, where are we at? Another reason. And they hate... don't. And they uh, don't. Another reason to hate the dwarves. Classic elf. <laughs> you see that strange creature peeking out from the other side of the hallway, looking at you warily. Um, you know, probably eight or nine fingers on each side, up against the wall, uh, pale discs staring back. You know, those, those strips on it, mouth closed, strips on its face just slightly wavering 
uh, as the entire as it's just like sitting there, probably like 10, 20 feet away from you guys, just like staring around the corner. Uh, hey, little guy. Oh, he's harmless. Don't look. Just look at him. <laughs> Would you what allow the... a quick detect evil? Uh, yeah, you can see it. Um, and that's a swift action for you, right? Yes. So you won't be able to take an attack of opportunity if something moves past you, just to be clear. Uh, uh, that's fine. Then absolutely. Uh, you detect evil on it. And you do not get an evil aura. Oh, he's just a little guy. I've been telling you. <laughs> he actually uh, really likes my uh, my turkey jerky. What? <laughs> jerky. He likes he likes rations. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, then that is it for that is it for these guys. Uh, Brings us to Sigbert. Arthur's on deck. Okay. Um, how big are these dragon skulls? They are... Those are the huge... The two huge dragon skulls that animated and came out at you. So they're uh, not physically okay. there presently. Um, right. There are okay. other dragon skulls along the perimeter of the room that range 10 to 15 feet. Okay. Um, and he's still ten feet in the air, correct? You're correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Move. So right here. Next stairs. to, next to the stairs, um, and then I'm gonna hold my action, um, just in case if he ever gets in range, um, and I'm gonna take a swing at him. Cool, love it. That'll be my turn. Arthur's up, and Simone's on deck. Arthur's gonna make his way to this pylon. That's so probably all your movement, yeah. 15, 20, 25, 30. And then a free five. Okay. Do I need to expend an action to like touch it, deactivate, or? So I, I don't know if Arthur's actually seen one of these up close. Um, and as a reminder, these are huge pillars with glyphs carved into the base of them. Um, but now, but Arthur, at this close of an inspection, especially with the aid of his the light from his pistol gun and the light from the uh, dragon head that's still here, he's able to see that. There are two sets of runes. There's a set which looked like it was originally inscribed on these pillars, and then there's something superimposed on top of it. The superimposed glyphs on top of it are, like, pulsating with the same hue of light as is generated from the, uh, from the, the dragon skull. But they're, they, like, they, like, line the, uh, the base of the pillar. So yeah, I mean, you you'd have, if you wanted to get rid of them somehow, you'd have to, to tell me how you're doing that. Will accomplish this by scratching the shit out of them, um, but you know, you don't have claws. Did you no, your... but he does have a butt of a rifle, so he's going to use that. Did you bring your cannon? Yeah, I brought my cannon <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Rolled it and everything. <laughs> um... Wait up, guys. Give me a strength check, please, as you're bringing your force down to bear with your uh, your gun butt. All, all night. Three. Wow, man. Um, you you slam your weapon against it, and for fear of, of breaking your weapon, you you know you give as much as you dare to give it, uh, and you knock a piece of the stone off. And you scrape one of the glyphs, but at this, you know, uh, and the the light begins to flicker, but you can tell that you're probably going to need to strike it once more. And at this rate, you're like looking down the the length of the room and seeing the other, you know, seven or eight pillars on this side. And you're like, at this rate, you know, it's going to take you all night to get through all these pillars. 
yeah, um, that's what Arthur's going to do. Kind of boring, but they're all needed. Uh, the rest of the party uh, sees Arthur going to town on the pillars. Anything to say to your compatriot? Um, when we're looking at the rest of the room, is, is this the only... Uh, I know that there's bones throughout the rest of it, but the one we're attacking is the only one that's currently animated, right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, and then when looking at these runes, they don't have the like evil uh, inscription over them, right? They, they do. Oh, they do have the evil they inscription. Do. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna look at big. What are you doing, fool? Deactivating the pylon. What does it look like? Does he? Is he actually doing any? Like, is he doing anything the with the butt is, of his the rifle? The light is flickering, but is still, but is still up. Gotcha. Um, um, Arthur, I think you gotta like scratch off the runes. Don't like beat them off. Scratch them off. <laughs> He'll take a test of ice and end turn. Uh, Simone is up. Tesca's on deck. Cool. Um, he is bloodied. I'm gonna do all four attacks under this guy. Give it a go, man. Two at first. Uh, Lois being a 24. All hit, or both hit. Go ahead and roll your next match. Both hit. Oh, Lois being... Not, uh, 19. The 19 misses, but the 18 I'm sure will hit. So you get three out of your... Yeah. Brain. Okay. Three. So, uh, 6, 12, 18 plus 13... 31, and then... Twelve, so forty-three damage. Nice, that's enough. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, narrate it to us, friend. Um, who who's around me right now? You got uh, Kaithar and Sigbert at the base of the stairs, and a Tesk behind you, and Arthur uh, on one of the pillars. What I'd like to do is uh, I'm gonna. If, if I can add a little flavor and include my party in this, uh, I'm going to have Will do like a dive bomb and uh, and he's going to yell out to uh, Kythar and Sigbert and be all like, big, uh, uh, big skeleton coming right at you. And he pushes it down to them and both of them at the same time swing their, swing their hammer and their swords. Boom, uh, just pulverizing this, uh, this enchanted bones into dust. Almost like an alley oop, if you will. Yeah, I like it. Great, uh, <laughs> great analogy. Um, from here, you guys, you guys aren't in free action, but for as long how you have seven rounds on the tentacle, right? So that's about thirty uh, seconds, right? Yeah. Yes, I have okay. seven rounds. So. There is. I cannot stress the urgency enough here, folks. But I'm going okay. to shift you back into free action there's still a horde of skeletons coming down the hallway and now that all of the large draconian skeletons are dead the light have started pulsating quicker doof, 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 on all the pillars and motes of light are coming out of the pillars towards the piles of bones in each of the corners of this room from the non-pulverized skeletons uh there is a creature staring at Galfast and Reed, uh, you know, from this back room. Uh, and for the moment, you guys are in free action. What would you like to do? Okay. Uh, I'm going to look at him. Hey, little guy, if you know a way out of here, can you can you give us a hand real fast? I'm going to say, oh, hold, give, give, me, give me one of your uh, rations. I'll give him a uh, ration. Okay, so I'm going to... Take his ration and one or two of mine, and I'm going to tear up little pieces and just start running. Okay. And I'm going to leave, like, a, as I run, and I still have the, the quick feet or whatever the hell it is, long strider, so my, my feet look like they're like a blur. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to leave basically a, a crumb trail as I run. I'm, I'm going to follow him. 
Okay. A what, Trout? <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> so Simone sees Galfast and Reed scramble past him. Galfast is like throwing bits of food behind him. It like for some reason it reminds you of Monzo. You're like not sure why. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Monzo would be falling behind eating him up. Yeah. Know, is the difference. Oh actually Simone would be like thinking that Monzo would be way more graceful in this situation. <laughs> Not a lot of finesse. Yeah. Our, see my arthritic knee sticking out from underneath <laughs> yeah. my You're like uh, pigeon toed. Uh and then Simone's gonna be like, everyone fucking take a pillar and start scratching it out. And he's gonna what? send uh and and it's like and try to and get rid of the runes is what I'm gonna say. Uh okay. and I'm gonna send Wilb to this one to take care of those. Can't we just leave? Uh, Not without consequences. Keep scratching. I'm going <laughs> go like... to the... go ahead. I'm going to go to... Uh, okay, I'm going to go to the one across to the left of a task. This one right here? Yeah. Oop. There you go. I'm going to go to next to um, – in Galfast, you were saying something? Um, so as I'm running, I'm going to look at Kythar <clears throat> and say, Kythar, is there, is there a way out? Do you see a, Do you see light up there? Uh, Ky- Kythar is going to take a perception check. And look, oh, does he need a perception check to look up? To he see? doesn't. It's a spiral staircase. There's there's no light from where he's at, but you know the nature of a spiral staircase, you, you're only looking at the bottom of the stairs above you. Yeah, he goes. Uh, he goes. Me check and starts heading up the the spiral spiral staircase at a brisk pace. At a brisk pace, I like it. Uh, <laughs> Galfast, anything in particular you're doing? I think I'm gonna continue the same. I think I'm gonna leave as well. I don't have any way to scratch out. <laughs> I can't do it with my arrows. I'll I'll go with uh, Kaithar. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna leave a a trail of food for my buddy. And, and your buddy uh, comes along beside you, and uh, he uh, he like starts to close the gap between you, and in a a horse something between a horse whisper and uh, like a squawk, he cries out to you. They'll keep coming until you destroy the altar. Uh, they'll keep coming until you destroy the altar, for those of you who are over Mike. Um, and it's no use! It's no use! Uh, and he makes his way to the stairs. Uh, who, okay. And only Galfas heard that? Um, arguably a task. Maybe Arthur would have heard it as well as he came around the corner. What? What? <laughs> So I frantically scratching off the runes. Everybody leave! I'm just gonna yell over and over. Uh, by oh. this, by this time, has uh, Kaithar found anything as he briskly walks up the stairs? Uh, he, you know, you're you've got your spell for thirty seconds. So everybody's made their way to a pillar. I figure five, ten seconds. Started the okay. scratching process. You know, uh, Kythar creature, was at the bottom of the stairs right, this while everyone it, was to the base yeah. of the stairs. We're talking maybe 20 seconds later. So Kythar is gone. Okay. Uh, what would that be? Four times his movement up the stairs. Uh, yes. and he, and he comes back down. I guess he wouldn't come back down. You, that's up to you. Uh, as he's gone, you know, a yeah. uh, hundred feet up, maybe, um, the air gets clearer. Um, the stench of decay fades that exists in this okay. place. Um, and the air becomes drier and less damp. There is no explicit sign of day, but, uh, but the staircase seems to be in relatively good shape. It continues upward. Right. Okay. So no light or anything. He's going to yell down, no light, but smell better. And, uh, he'll do a constitution roll to yell. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's probably yeah. appropriate here. Nat 20. Hey! Nice. Fills with Kythar's voice. Uh, 
Yeah. Because I know his constitution is like three or four. Plus three. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so on 19, 19 uh, this whole room fills with Kythar's voice. And he, he says, I'm sorry, one more time. He says, uh, uh, no light yet, but smell better. Uh, and, he, and so that's what Kythar does. Um, uh, so, and then uh, at what, uh, uh, what are the people who heard this creature talk to them and warn us about something? How do they react? <laughs> can we, I uh, he has know. a name okay can we uh, listen let's not argue that right now <laughs> let's argue what he told you i don't whatever yeah what did so he said something to me and then galfast said uh everybody out let's run do you do you really believe that the creepy looking dude galfast i mean he just kind of ran past and left us to yeah, he said to leave. He said there's an altar that's going to keep them coming. There's no way we stop them. And I'm going like, to look behind me, and do I see skeletons starting to... No, but you can I mean, I guess... Out. Yeah. Um, it, um, it's no use! I'm hightailing it out of there, too. He's okay in my book. He's good. We're getting out of here. Uh-huh. His name is Gustavo! <laughs> 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 All right, well, I guess we're following Gustavo's lead. Did the runes get better, Dave? When we scratched. Yeah, I mean, you guys all started the process. I figured everybody got, you know, at least time for one attack um, and started scratching these runes out. A few of these pillars have gone out. There are less motes of light collecting, um, but there are still, especially from the pillars which have not been touched yet, there are still motes of light leaving those and filling the backs of the skeletons in the same positioning as the dragon heads that you just fought. Like, it's obvious this is an animation process of some sort. Uh, I'm seeing that the scratching out of the runes is doing nothing and things are being animated again. Slowly, uh, not I, nothing, but it is it is still happening. Yeah, yeah we're not so, going to be able to do it in time. So yeah. from that, Arthur's going to start going. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, we're both going to take off. Oops. Then I just need to know, is anybody staying behind? Swear to God, Reed. (laughs) Uh, No, I'm getting out of here. Kaithar is the farthest one up, so. That's true. And on that note, um, I need to know how Kaithar reacts when the creature catches up to him and attempts to scamper between his legs and, like, up ahead of him. Uh, I can't remember. Man. Okay, so I can't remember in Soto's last game, did did, do if you could help me out, DM, if he actually saw the creature. The closest thing that Kythar has seen is a shadow scampering across the uh, hallway. I have a feeling that Kythar would probably try to swipe at the creature. Okay. Roll I have a feeling that I feel like that's what he no. would do. Roll attack. I swear to God. He'd be like, ah, and like makes an attack. I feel like that's a Kythar thing. Dude. Does anybody else disagree with me? No. He's going to, like, smash this thing. He's going to, like, crush it. Just, oh, poor guy. Uh, t- 25. Yeah, 25 hits uh, as he, Kythar, begins to bring his axe down on this thing. And it says, no, it is friend. It is friend. Uh, damage? Uh... <laughs> Wait, what did he say? No use what? Uh, hey, low damage. damage. Eight damage. Eight damage. Uh, as it, as his hammer, you know, smashes down on one of this thing's uh, feet, hands, it's hard to tell. The digits all look the same. One of the ones on the back end where your feet would be. Uh, and it, you know, howls in pain, which echoes down the rest of the staircase and the rest of the party is able to hear this thing cry out in pain, and uh, and it scampers away from Kythar back down the stairs. <laughs> um, I think I'm coming up next. Coming uh, up next. Does does he does he go? <laughs> does he run? Does he go near me? He's gonna he's gonna all? run to Galfast first. As Galfast sees this thing okay. limping quickly down the stairs back towards him. 
Oh, you're fine. Turn around. And it like pushes gonna, itself up against gonna, the wall and like covers its its face like and like winces. And it's like, don't hurt! No pain. <laughs> I'm say, Reed, Reed, pick him up. What did what did he say? Don't hurt, no pain. Um, I'm oh, gonna Reed come to up to him, him and I'm gonna give him a hug. I'm like, it's all right, little guy. We're gonna get you out of here. And I'm gonna <laughs> pick him up. And I'll, I'm gonna say, I'll I'll hit, I'll get the bad dad. Huh? And it just starts screaming ah! in like fear. As you wrap your arms around it, um, you feel its body ooh. like tense up, and it like curls its fingers. I think I have something that like it it gives the people around me like a calm presence. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, it's like an aura that I have. Wow. Uh, while you're looking, everybody else is going up the stairs. Anything in particular anybody's doing? There's quite a ruckus happening ahead of you on the stairs. Constantly looking up. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking for light. Specifically. I mean, I, I'm carrying him with me. He, I'm, I'm assuming that I can do that. Yeah. He's not resisting. He's yeah. kind of frozen. Uh, but he's not. He's also screaming. He's also, like, terrified. And then right. after, like, 10 or 15 seconds solid of him screaming, he kind of, like, screams himself out. And he's just like staring at you with these big eyes, like the little things hanging off its face are just like vibrating. Uh, if his eyes were possible to be any wider, they are. Uh, and he's like shaking. Like, it's all right, guy, I got you. Oh, no, I'm uh, I'm, I'm a Super Saiyan voice. It's all right, guy, I got you. <laughs> um, it just says you project a strong, good aura. Probably something you spec into at higher levels, be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then um, you guys climb this spiral staircase for, and I'll remind you, it was like a 500, you know, foot long stretch to get into the tomb in the first place, down a long, narrow corridor. And these stairs are, um, you know, are obviously the way that this space was originally intended to be accessed um, when when it was like a functioning tomb, when people would have come to visit here before it was just abandoned ruins. Uh, you guys make your way up near the top, and after five or ten minutes of climbing, uh, Simone does detect subtly at first, but then greater and greater light streaming in from around the corner, and you guys emerge in a uh, what was obviously a large church of some kind at one point, but uh, it's only got one and a half walls standing, a couple of crumbling, you know, lines of stone that maybe once were pews. And, uh, and unfortunately uh, that stench, uh, that stench of decay has picked back up again up here. Um, and if you guys give me just a minute, there are a couple of things that happen. Uh, okay. I've, got pre- I've got a pre-written for this, so bear with me. Uh, as you all emerge from the ancient tomb, greeted by the early evening light, you are met with a truly desolate sight. The ruined city of Asulde is overrun by hordes of undead creatures, their lifeless eyes fixed straight ahead as they shamble through the streets. The air is thick with the stench of decay, and the sound of bones scraping against the ground echoes through this deserted town. Most of the buildings in the city are crumbling and decayed, with roofs caved in and walls collapsed, including the one which surrounds you now. Many of them have been reduced to piles of rubble, evidence of the centuries of neglect and decay which have befallen this once thriving metropolis. The few intact buildings that remain stand as lonely monuments to the city's former glory, now nothing more than a shadow of its former self. At the center of this ruined city stands a massive temple, its grand facade standing sharply against the cracked and crumbling buildings surrounding it. The temple radiates that familiar pulsating blue-violet light, which seems to create an aura of foreboding and malevolence, as if it were a beacon for the hordes of undead that roam this city. The overwhelming number of undead wandering through the streets makes it clear this is now only a place of death and decay. As you take in the sight of the ruined city and its shambling inhabitants, you know that you must be cautious and tread carefully if you hope to survive in this desolate and hostile landscape. You're carrying with you a strange creature, uh, shining eyes, ugly to behold, 
and cowering before you. Uh, it's 9.34. How are we doing? That's I good. Silver That's good. said he was... Where are you getting off right now? Yeah, I could stop and point. Okay. Then, uh, then one more thing before I leave you all. As you come into the light of the late afternoon, the early afternoon, or excuse me, late afternoon, early evening, there is a resonance of magic, unlike, hmm, not un, not unlike the, I don't know if you all remember, but when you walked into Cade's home, I described to you the feeling of magic, of like a magic user who knows their shit, and that they, mm-hmm. they like have a, they have like an aura, they have like a, their magic leaves like a resonance, right? Uh, which lets you know that you're in the presence of, in that, in that context, it was a, like, your characters would know not to fuck around here, or that there'd be dire consequences if they did, you know? And that was just kind of like fair warning from the DM. In this instance, it is obvious that this place is filled with a similar magic from a highly magical source. And it's a, a high-pitched hum which starts, you know, in the top of your, your ears and a rumbling from the bottom of your feet. And where those two sounds meet within you, you all hear a voice in your heads. I have been expecting you. <laughs> so kind of you to bring me what I seek and return to me those relics which Tahaka once carried. There is no being that you can see obviously creating the sound, but it is obvious that whoever it is resides nearby. And that's where we'll end the session. We'll pick it up in a week. Oh, nah. Dang, we don't even get to rest. You guys do whatever we're getting into. We could uh, make camp right here. It seems pretty cozy. Just put the lantern down. No big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the guy that the can cast message or whatever it is will never find us under the slightly disguised lantern. I guess that's true. Hell yeah. Well, you guys have a week to, to figure out what you're going to do next, how you're going to proceed. Um, I will... I will like prompt you guys. We're going to um, introduce a new mechanic to get you guys through the um, like through to your next leg, like to get through the city. Like I obviously don't have like a detailed map of a city that I'm gonna like make you guys draw a line. We make a left at this crumbled building and then go over the the shambling bridge. Like we're gonna go kind of back into theater of mind, do some narrative stuff. Um, I will outline the details of it to you guys, but basically you're going to use skills off your character sheet to proceed through town. So, you know, a good example, kind of classic example would be, well, you know, I want to roll and it, and they're individual challenges. So it's going to be like, I want to roll a stealth check to try to help the party move as quietly as possible through this chunk. And then, you know, you roll, uh, you roll for it and you either succeed or you fail. Um, you are trying to gain, a number of successes before you gain three failures um, and three failures will stop your progress and you guys will basically, you know, the undead that's coming through the city will basically catch up to you. Um, and so it'll be up to you guys to decide like how you're going to proceed. It's not going to be a matter of just like having everybody roll in the stealth and move. It's going to be like, well, I want to use my strength check to move a rock to the side and, you know, so we can make our way through a, a house that seems to be deserted instead of going down the alleyway that has the undead in it. And somebody saying, well, I want to use my climb check to climb to the top of a building and look for the safest route to travel. Like, it's going to be that kind of stuff. And you guys are going to be rolling skill checks uh, in a more narrative fashion as you make your way through the town. So just think about the skills you have on your character sheets over the next week uh, and which one of them might apply to a situation like this. And we'll take it from there next week. Cool. Sounds good to me. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for playing. Yeah. You, you're back cool. in the light well, of day. Thanks. You're out of the dungeon. And uh, I wouldn't say things are, are better necessarily, but they're brighter, literally. You guys have some daylight. So. I just need to go night-night. <laughs> <laughs>
everybody <laughs> night night. That's that's yeah. part of the challenge. Is uh, you guys you guys made a conscious decision about four sessions ago when you were like, you know, okay, we killed these flying things. Are we gonna rest and recuperate, or are we gonna power ahead? And uh, you know, remember the power ahead. Made. That's the choice you guys made. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Then I will see you next week, and we'll play some then. All right, sounds good. Cool. See you right. later. Later, guys. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, I think it's probably just myself who I'm streaming to at this point, but I will know that for certain momentarily here. It is! So I'm going to tell me that I'm great, and I will catch you guys all next week. Maybe even not then. Uh, we're streaming again on Friday at about 6.30. We'll, we'll maybe see you guys then. Later.